guys. Huge breaking news. Huge news just coming off of our fresh off the press from our show in New York. We have two shows coming up in January. In Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. Doll, ever heard of it? It's where rock stars go. Our home state, our home field advantage. We're going to be doing a show January 11th and January 18th at the one, the only Dynasty, Dynasty typewriter. typewriter. Los Angeles, 2023, January. Be there. We need our Los Angeles. We need to be, we need to feel represented and we need to feel our home city loving us. So please come get tickets. There's going to be two shows. Come to one, come to both. Guys, we've done it's a our mini residency incredible, doll. we've done our incredible two shows launched covid and ended covid at the roxy and now we and now we launch a whole new chapter so come be part of it okay if you're a patreon subscriber dolls you're the priority here and you have a pre-sale and we have a pre-sale launching on wednesday october 19th at 10 a.m and I'll give you the special password and the pre-sale registration link. Look for that in the Patreon description. If you're just a normie and you're getting this shit for free, you can also get a pre-sale, but it'll be a little bit later, doll. And the general pre-sale is going to start Thursday, October 20th, and it will last till 10 p.m. And then all tickets go on sale Friday October 21st. Wow. There's a lot of chances to get in early. These shows are going to sell fast. So we look forward to... We'll see you there, dolls. Pre-sailing you. Hi, back in LA. Back from New York. I'm a little sad. I'm a little sad. It was a little melancholic flying home in magic hour. It's Riding High in April shot down in May to do a crazy successful show at the Bowery Ballroom. Guys, you had to be there. Have the crowd going fucking nuts the entire People time. People were standing. Feeling like a rock star. Did you see that? People were standing. Yeah, it was standing room only. People were standing against the wall on either side and then in the back entrance, like in the lobby area. I know. I was like, wow, this feels like a sold out funeral. You yeah. know, like at really popular people when they die, sometimes mm -hmm. people just have to stand in the lobby. A tragic death. I know. And I was like, God, this is amazing. And then you go out, you celebrate with friends, you just like soak up the vibes. And then and then the next day you was, wake up and go to DSW to return some hideous boots and then schlep your hungover ass on to JFK where but, someone tells you you need to take five pounds out of your luggage because you can't check it. And so you unpack and then pack and then weigh your bag again. And they say, you got to take one more pound out. So you take a pair of jeans oh, out damn. and then put it in. I tried to engage in like a conscious, positive dialogue about the reasoning behind the mm. bag weights, like not being a troll, but just genuinely curious. Right. Like, were they Much in the way where I was like, I'm genuinely curious about airflow gate. Like I was like, I'm genuinely curious about why airflow gate the door. Oh, I know. Let's leave the past in the past. Yeah, let's leave it. But I'm over it. I'm like, I know. I, yeah, I don't even I know. think about it anymore. Uh, but so I was like, I'm just curious. Like I'm not trying to be rude, but when you guys say. Why do you, why do you have weight limits on this bag? You can't try. No, but I'm trying. And then he, I was not. like, I was like, so why do they have the weight limits? Because right. when I take anything out of that bag and put it into my carry on, right. it's still the same amount of weight that goes on the plane. How did, how did they respond? He was like, well, there was a big crash and that's why they did the weight limits. But I was like, but it's not, it's not really a weight limit because you're still carrying the same amount of stuff goes. It's not like you take 10 pounds out and then ship it somewhere. It's yeah. like, you're just putting it in a different bag, but the same amount of weight. So that actually doesn't, 
I was like, that doesn't really make sense. Laura. And then, what? I'm just trying to engage in a dialogue. I know, and re- I just want to understand. People who work at the airport don't want to have no, a No, but I was, al- I was also nice about it. I was like, right. I know, I was like, I know you're just doing your yeah. job, but I'm just curious. I just wonder like what they yeah. say. And he was like, honestly, he's like, someone told me it was a crash. I don't know. But like they have cameras everywhere and they know like if I let heavy bags on the plane they know that I'm the one that did it and so they can track everything that I do and then I get in trouble and I was like okay that makes sense and I was like I hate technology I hate surveillance and like I hate the weight limit and it doesn't make sense nanny stayed at the airport it's truly that's you're under those surveillance people work so hard and like I know and I was have like an ex- rude no I know I'm just saying the fact that they have to like be annoying to thwart losing their like benefits. Yeah, to have some <laughs> fucking snitch be like, "We see that you let five pounds extra on the plane three times. You're fired." Like, also that feels like a ruse, like the crash thing. That feels like a no. That's fake. That's like fascist. He was like, some passenger told me that. I don't even know if that's true, because it. I mean, can't, that's how Aaliyah's plane went down. I know, but. If that there was, was a, a real time. weight limit, they would weigh your carry on. Yeah. They would weigh all the stuff that you bring and then be like, you can't go over this amount. But it's not really a weight limit. So no. what the fuck is it? Also, if you go business or first, you get 77 pounds. I luggage. don't know what it is. It's I... control and it's it's rude. And it's, a, again, a human rights violation. Oh, my God. And I won't stand for it. I felt... Uh... I felt human rights violation when I was standing at the snack hub on my Jack Blue mm-hmm. and where you can go self serve. Oh, okay. Where you can and get like chips from a basket. It's like a stock, it's like a hutch kind of thing. And this Gen Z cool guy who was sitting in the exit row nearly, I nearly fell over because he, he, Darted past me to get to the Cheez Its. Uh oh. And I was like, whoa, whoa. And I, like, <laughs> and I felt really oppressed. And I felt like it was honestly homophobic. They're making people fight for their lives. The flight attendants <laughs> were cracking me up on my flight. They were not. They were on a mission. This one was on a mission to remind people that they should be listening to the announcements. And it was, she was killing me. And I was like, I have no choice but to stand this queen. Yeah. She was being so like perfectly passive aggressive. And she was like, <laughs> this, this woman with her kid that was sitting in front of me, like kept asking her things that they had just said, which is like, I get it. She's a kid. She's probably not paying attention. And it's like, but also ha- haven't you flown before? Yeah. Like, but it was also the like, same song honey, and w- like we Girl, know don't the deal. Worry. Just shut up. And no, you don't care. No, it's not going to crash. You're fine. She had like a giant carry on that was like too big and she had it sitting in front of her and the woman was like you can't have like a suitcase sitting with you <laughs> and she was like well but and she goes well if you listen to the announcements they, that's why you really have to pay attention to what the captain is saying what the lead flight attendant is saying because these were announcements that were just said nearly two minutes ago and the mom was like okay but and then she asked something else and she was like those were also said in the announcements and i was like okay yeah work. Work. work work i was like yeah i was like i see you and mm-hmm. i like They should take her bag and open the exit, emergency exit, and just throw it out onto the ground and let it explode and just not wordlessly just do it. And then she was like, she was like, and unfortunately the doors have closed and we are sealed in now. So great. We have, and she was like barely containing it. She made her pay. And then I saw an entire row that was empty and it seemed like we were done boarding. It was like two minutes had passed before I saw a single soul coming down and I was sitting you know, it was like right behind me basically. And, and I was like, can I, if no no one's sitting there and she goes, we're still boarding, sir. And I went, she was over it. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm on your side. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, it was an amazing trip. I love New York. I felt a sense of melancholy and bittersweetness at like the passage of time. Mm -hmm. And like that a, a place can be your whole world. And then it's just not anymore. Yeah. And you don't really know it anymore, but you still do know it. Mm-hmm. You know? I felt... I felt home there still. That's good. I felt a sense of possibility and even leaving the Sheraton, I was like, <laughs> I oddly don't want to leave. I've been Stockholmed into being like, I'll miss it here. Yeah. The Sheraton 
That was on you, doll. That was on me. But you know what? It was a it was a, a slip that I'm owning. Usually, mm-hmm. I'm on top of it with hotels, but this was not a win, and yeah. I I own it. And I have to say, a nice straight guy. While I was waiting to for my Uber to go to the airport, a nice straight guy said, "Hey, man, I saw your Whitney Cummings video. It was really funny." I love and that. I was like a Twitter recognition. Yeah, and and I you know what? And I thought I love the shirt. Yeah, this is a big. The, I said it to you in text, but I was like, the Sheraton is Carrie's Overlook Hotel. It is. And that guy was your Lloyd. It's it's crazy that I, it's a place, I said it on the show, but like a place that I've walked by so many times have been like, for That's the a life real of piece me, of shit. I will never stay in this hole. And it is a complete nightmare place. And then I end up staying there. And not only did you end up staying there, it. you did a passionate pitch to me, got me on board, yeah. roped me into your nightmare. And on it, okay, I'm going to say, can a fan please make a graphic of the, that picture at the end of The Shining with Jack Nicholson surrounded by all the people in the 1920s? I need you to put Carrie's face on Jack Nicholson's and make it the Sheraton. Do it. Please make a Sheraton Shining graphic featuring Carrie and you can put my face on something too. Laura can be in the back just like. But Carrie's Jack. Um, I have to say back to crazy flight attendants, mm-hmm. really just trying to gain a modicum of respect. Right. We had a really frantic male flight attendant on my flight from LA to New York. So and you mean he, a gay man? Mm, I don't know. I didn't feel attracted to him, so he must have been straight, mm-hmm. but he could have been, he can be, you can be frantic and straight. That's true. He was so obsessed with no one texting during the times when you're not supposed to text and i think we've all understood by now that it really doesn't matter if you text in the air on takeoff on landing like that actually has nothing to do with anything and it's just another power play but he was at the end of the flight he's like we're beginning our descent into los angeles even though you might have a bar available on your phone and you are wanting to text and be on the phone. It's one of the most dangerous things you can possibly do. So please don't do it. And I looked at a guy that was sitting across the aisle in the window. We made eye contact and he just shook his head at me and we both laughed because we were both like, this queen is fucking (laughs) lying through his frantic teeth to try and get us not to do this. But I love being like you texting right now will cause irreparable damage. You will be responsible for the death of hundreds of people he on behalf of this new york-based flight crew we thank you for not texting upon landing dole <laughs> I'm obsessed with, it's one of the most it's, dangerous incredibly dangerous things you can possibly do i look i get it i mean i cannot imagine i don't <laughs> i don't even i can't even begin begin to understand the strength it takes to be a flight attendant no it's super fucking natural and like even if the even if the must, flight attendant is like miserable and so rude and mean, like I still respect them. Oh, because, absolutely. One because I might need them in the in the event of an emergency, they'll be my fucking lifeline. You want to be on their side. And two, yeah, you don't want to be. They want you want them. You don't want them to like stick a foot out as you're trying to emergency exit and trip you <laughs> and you break all your teeth out your mouth. But they're <laughs> out your mouth, dole. <laughs> but they're truly like. They're, they're warriors of the air. They're just, they're like nannies in the air. We're all like, everyone on a plane is a giant baby. Do they work like 14 hours a day? They probably, it's probably like a nurse. It's, you know how like nurses work like, 12 hour shifts three days a week. Yeah. And then they're done. That's like their max. They probably do like two or three. I mean, any flight attendants listening weigh in. I'm yeah. imagining it's not, it's like a few days of crazy rash hours. and then you have off. Because I was like, if someone's going from like L.A. to New York and then back, that's like 14. That's cumulatively like 14 or 15 hours of work, including like yeah. getting to the airport, getting on the plane, yeah. getting it ready. And like I was just like, damn, that's such a long day. You have to be like on. Your, also, you're like on your feet, taking off landing, pushing that cart around, just breathing in that air, breathing in everyone's shitty breath air. And like repeating the same, I guess now you can mostly push a button and a video will play. 
But it, uh, but also people are just fucking bitches on flights because they're literally getting treated like subhuman pieces of garbage from the second you walk into an airport to the second you leave unless you're paying like thousands of dollars to sit business. It's a tough job. It's a really tough job. And like now you have to deal with like crazy people freaking out and yelling at you, especially like during the pandemic. Oh my God, I can't even. And when also you're like, that's happening on top of like the airlines not giving a f- not helping us out and like so many of us are getting sick and fucking dying in the beginning of it and like no one was helping them and they were just like on the plane no of covid like so flight attendants in the beginning of covid were just like being forced to fly i feel like and like they were getting sick and some of them were dying oh damn from covid so like back before like vaccine and everything mhm but like they just were not getting any respect during that time yeah, they're they're the true warriors, the but, true fighters. But some of them are truly terrifying, and I like I'm haunted. Yeah, I mean they got to do what they got to do in this world. I'll never forget when just a gag, the entire flight, the flight crew was all gay men on this one red eye I took. That's huge. And they were totally like, at one point it was like two a.m. And I like woke up and I could just hear them all like they were having like a kiki in the in the kitchen in the galley and just lolling being so loud. And like I obviously didn't say anything, but I was like in my head, I was like, I want to tell them to be quiet so bad, but I'm also truly terrified of them. Oh, see, that would make me feel really safe. Oh, I think no, I feel like s- laughing. Like a bunch of gays laughing. No, no, no. Near I me. felt safe, but I felt I would be too afraid to be like, hey. Oh, wow. I would never in my life tell a group of gays to be quiet. Especially gay flight attendants. No, never. That's, that's another... like the one. That's the line you do not cross. Because they will. I'm more like, I'm more sensitive to people talking and like a long monotone voice to like when I missed my outgoing flight to New York and then just had to like trade miles to sit in the lounge for hours and like i became truly that lounge was my we work and i was an employee you were that guy what's who's the founder of WeWork? that just that long-haired guy and i was jared leto as that guy just type type typing away and there's this woman her husband sitting next to me and she i was like Marriage looks like hell (laughs) based on their rapport, which was she would speak at length in the most long monotone, like making observations, being like, oh, the light switch is on. I like to turn the lights on sometimes when I'm at home, but then other times I like to turn the lights off. And when I notice the light switch is on, I think about wow, the lights are on and energy is flowing. And then, but sometimes it can be nice to like shit like that. Where it's, hell. And he was not saying a word. And I was like, this man wants to die. And she fuging? is the cause. He was fuging. I was starting to fugue. I, w- I was cute? like, no, they're just like an old, on like an older couple. And she was just like blabbering away. And I was like, God help us all. Yeah, that would And make... that's the kind of thing that like grates on me, I think, more than hearing like Well no, I get noise. I look to flight attendants. I mean, they're always like poker face and like always chill as hell, but mm-hmm. like I'm always like waiting for if they're nervous, then th- you know what I mean? But th- they never will show it. Yeah. But once I watched that TikTok about turbulence I've become Then I, I was like, I'm never weirded out by turbulence again. It's only landing and takeoff that you really need to worry about. I know. My dad always says for because he flies and mm-hmm. he said the first seven minutes. But turbulence is actually NBD because you're basically just like suspended by pressure in like a jello mold. Yeah, it's like made planes are made to ride it's like just a boat going yeah. through like waves. But and if you're in a Boeing, say a fucking prayer. Say a fuck. We won't. We won't go down Boeing Gate again. But no. But you guys know. You guys know. You know. Um, what else is Jared going Leto, on? I watched Morbius. That's on you, Dole. Well, okay. It's been. It was like the number one movie on Netflix. It was like the cr- the biggest on Netflix. Yeah, it was, was on it Net- a Netflix movie. It came out on Netflix. It streamed on Netflix. Oh. It was like missed that. It was like killing the game, Dole. 
and it had a huge engagement and that's why it became like because it was so bad morbius it was like a cult movie people i think COVID. okay here's my big well hold on so okay you go and then i'll go i just need to say and i feel i will not be saying cut this out wow bold jared leto is the, one of the worst actors of all time agree he's a terrible actor agree and no one can convince me otherwise and i don't care that he won for that fucking movie that i don't even want to talk about fuck him and fuck everyone who's perpetuated the jared leto industrial complex and that we all must like pretend that this motherfucker is a good actor he's a terrible actor and i'm not a professional actor but i can say with confidence he fucking sucks and morbius was a piece of shit and More shame morbius. shame shame to make matt smith be in that movie and that girl from ambulance be in that movie because they're stars and they did not deserve to be acting their little hearts off on screen beside Mr. Leto. And Tyrese did not deserve to be in that movie. Tyrese deserves much better. He deserves so, many more Fast and Furious movies to be made that he can star in. Also, Jared Leto literally looks like Pete Burns from Dead or Alive. We got <laughs> glamored by Jared Leto as, as Jordan Catalano. I, okay, and yeah, he was good in that Then role. He was cute. The industrial complex continued and we've all just bought into this lie but it's a lie. i've i've seen i've seen the face of god and it was not when i saw house of gucci but afterwards where god revealed to me that jared leto is one of the worst actors on the face of the planet he's bad he was okay jordan obviously that's an iconic role well that's, that's that, that aside he was a cute twink but here's the deal. His face scares me and I'm and also he's like he's sucking the blood of youth to look so young. He's also, also like, I'm like I should be vegan because Jared is so well preserved. Isn't he also like a cult leader basically? He has like a he has like a like I don't think so doll. No, but I think he has like he has like a weird like Anyway, maybe take that out. Oh. Out. Take that. We out. thought we were going to get away with take it. Take that out. But I don't appreciate him. I don't appreciate him either. I think that COVID depleted brain cells of people. And I think people have gotten dumber. And as a result of having gotten COVID. And I think that... <laughs> COVID did make us all dumb. COVID did. It really did. I think the long-term studies are going to be like, oh, everyone got a little bit dumber. And I think me. that that's reflected in what movies top at the box office now. Because it literally is like movies for fucking stupid people with brains that are about as functional as a dog. Except like, Smile. Except Smile, which is fine. But like... Like, what was the top movie? Like, Lyle Lyle Crocodile was number three. I guess that's like a kid's movie, so whatever. But what was the number one movie this weekend? It was truly... It was shonking. Barbarian? No. Great movie. It wasn't Barbarian. I have to look, because I was like, what? No, I agree. Anyway, Morbius was so... It was like unbelievably bad well yeah and i watched black phone or tried to on the plane i was like i'm in a black phone damn, that's time. A intense well i was like feeling like just i like to be harrowed sometimes you know i saw Pla saving private ryan recently on a plane and i was mm -hmm. like okay i could go down this path the child acting in black phone incredible. is so fucking bad what incredible the sister she was terrible oh Carrie. i thought she was great what she was like my least favorite kind of child actor that's like like insolent and everything is like well spoken and her, just the attitude. I was like, this is just this is not I was interesting like, because I thought I thought all the shit with like the spooky stuff I didn't care about, but I thought the child the children like beating each other up, like I thought that was like very like raw and real. I have to Ethan wholeheartedly was, disagree. I thought that they were so bad they were like ungrounded in that time period they had no natural like flow with each other their dialogue was like it was it was really bad i just had to turn it off i was like i can't take this bitch. i also have to say it was like weird that they kind of glossed over the fact that like <laughs> ethan hawk was like a pedophile <laughs> clearly <laughs> <laughs> well yeah if he's like i know but like they, they just kind of like i mean they went there with so much but i was like why like 
I don't know. I literally could. I got eight minutes. I got 12 minutes into it. I was like these fucking flops. I was like these actors fire them all. I watched um, Halloween ends topped the box office. Of course it did. Yeah. But like that movie is. But that's a guarantee. It's a it's like a legacy like IP movie. Of course it's going to top. Yeah. I watched. You know what I watched and I want to finish it. It was actually so I was like charmed. Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. I know. Le- I Leslie should have watched Manville that. Was so I fucking love her, and it also uh, Jason Isaacs was in it. I don't know so who that good. is, but you've, everyone you've seen his face. Yeah, everyone that my mom loved it. Oh, it was my a, gay friends loved it. It like, was a fucking. I think romp. everyone who has watched Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris has loved it, and I need to watch it. It was a fucking romp. It was just like. I love an old lady going to Paris. What's not po- to love? Post World War II, like Couture. going to Dior, mm-hmm. and then Isabelle Huppert is like a bitch in it. And That's I love cool. Her. Yeah. Oh, it's so great. She I have to finish it. Is c- so cool. Isabelle Huppert. Mm-hmm. Amazing. What can't she do? Truly nothing. I know. I still have to see Greta. Greta's incredible. I have Actually, to watch. it's bad. It's bad, but good. Okay. I was thinking of that movie. I was thinking of. Uh, L, I got confu- I got my wires crossed, but L is so good. Well, that was she was nominated for an Oscar for that. Yeah, but well, Greta well, was then. tight too. Um, anyways, anyways, should we get into another great crowd of people who truly are charming, put in the work, and uh, should be movie stars? I'm Carrie. I'm Lara, and you're listening to Sexy, Sexy Unique, Unique Podcast. Podcast. Jersey, Jersey Shore, Shore bitch. bitch. But ba da ba da ba ba. It's the morning after the first night in South Beach, and Ronnie was having a three way kiss. In bed. In bed. They're back at the house, and Ronnie's like so drunk, and he's like in a place of just true evil. He goes, they get to their room, and all the boys are kind of scandalized by like what he had just done. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yo, yo, I did mad work. I did mad work. <laughs> I was like, he seems like he's on something else other than just booze. I think he's on dry goods. Dry goods? Dry goods. Dry goods. What's <laughs> dry goods? So Drugs. We call that in the in twelve in recovery. It's like powder, Drugs. powders. Wow. Dry goods. Yeah. He was giving I I did work tonight. I did work. Yo. He goes, You know what I'm gonna do? I did that at the club and I'm gonna go sleep with my girl now. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> he goes, How about that? How about that? And they're all like, okay. I like that. I like knowing what, like a a shade, going a shade too far for these boys where they're all just like, they're all like dogs at the end of the day. Like when it comes to hooking up, but that. It scared them. It scared them. And they were like, that's wrong. Ronnie, when he's that drunk and like that on one, he has, I've never seen on any kind of reality show. Obviously, we've seen so many people be fucked up over the years, but I've never seen someone with like that little light behind their eyes when they're when they're drunk or high. It's like his eyes go fully black, true blood style, mm-hmm. and he's channeling the devil himself. And he has, he goes, it's it's evil. And he's Sam, evil. Of course, lets him in. I know. I said, girl, please have a little bit of self respect. Then he says, I'm speechless. Which I was like, wow. I love Polly, you know, when he's like seen too much and touch darkness and he just is silent and laying, I like him silently laying st- sideways yeah. and just staring. Mm-hmm. And then Sitch is like laughing, but it's uncomfortable laughter. And it's like, these guys. They're pigs, but you're. But you're like. You're a hog. You're Beelzebub. Yeah. So the next morning, Ronnie's the first one up and he's like doing that like post blackout shame check-in where you go and you ask every you like kind of you ask everyone what they saw and then you claim to have been so blackout you remember nothing and you try to get on everyone's side so you're like really like sweet and you're like hey what's up when he went and laid with sammy in the night in the dead of night she goes did you do anything and he goes no no and then so yeah he's checking in with all the guys and they're just like still shell shocked. And he goes, Oh, I was blackout. Like, I don't remember a thing. I don't remember a thing. And then Polly goes, You're part of the IFF, the I'm fucked foundation. <laughs> and I, this is like 
my favorite thing that they do yeah. is make up these little jokes with they're, each other. They're good jokes. And they're so funny because this is what you do with your tight friends. I know. You just like rib them and then make up inside jokes. And we're so lucky to get a glimpse of that kind of Polly love. D's also on the phone with his BFF called Big Mike. <laughs> and he's relaying everything. And then he confirms to Ronnie what he did. And Ronnie's like, damn. Ronnie has like a bandage on his wrist in his confessional. I was like, this man is hanging on by a thread and always has been. I was so insulted when he said I had a schnooky night. I was like, no, don't bring her into this. Yeah, because she keeps it fun. She She's it messy, fun but flirty. fun. You take it to a place of Hades. Don't bring my girl into this. Do not slut shame her like that. And fuck you. And you try and hurt people when yeah. you're drunk. And that... Is the Snooki difference. doesn't do that. I'm like, what's the difference between you and me? I would have been so... I would, if I heard that, I would have been like, fuck you. Yeah, Ron needs to get checked. He goes, oh, when Sam finds out that I made out with three women in the club, she might get a little mad. She might get a little mad. I was like, Ronnie's having a manic episode. He like, was, he's like, cut him. He's like a cutter and he has a full-blown girl interrupted bandage on his wrist, cackling to himself about his own bad behavior. I'm like... 5150. Speaking of cutter vibes, <laughs> Pink is coming out with new music. <laughs> I'll see you at the Pink Tour 2023. I'll be watching. Uh because she fucking serves. She's she a boots the house fucking down. Pop superstar. Ariel. She's a Ariel ribbon style. dancer. Ariel superstar. Ariel superstar. Click click. Sam um, comes Sammy. out and she's feeling like you know she's just feeling like the cat that got the canary because a blackout Guido Juice head slept on top of her covers last night. Sam I'm is, like, honey, please. But she's also like, she's... You see, you, I, I'm watching it and I'm like, this is what's happening. She reverts into mummy mode. Like, oh, <laughs> mummy. She reverts into like breastfeeding mode and mm -hmm. she's like, to Ron, come sit here so you can eat. And she makes room for him and she's like taking care of him. And well, Ronnie's like, you're my mom. There's also a level of shame because it's like, okay, everyone saw him yell at you in a car, call you a cunt, <laughs> and like verbally abuse you, yeah. psychologically torture you, and then you let him sleep in the bed and everyone knows that. So you know that they're judging you and you're also judging yourself for your lack of self-control and like... And you're also embarrassed, but then you're also obsessed with this guy. And it's very relatable. Like, yeah. been there. But also, I'm like, honey, like, this is so bad. And I can't believe this is the nascent stages of their nine-year relationship. Ronnie's in, like, the mode to spiritually breastfeed. Mm -hmm. So he's like... And then Sammy starts grilling all the boys. She goes, did you do you last night? Nope. <laughs> he goes, no, no. I'm blah. I don't even. I don't. I don't remember. I don't. I'm blackout. But then all the guys are like, they want to cover Paul for him. Paul is fuging sideways. They want to cover for him, obviously, but they're also like they feel bad and they're like sheepish. And Sammy clearly knows the answer. Yeah, to this. they look guilty as fuck. She knows. I'm like, you know the answer in your heart. She goes, "What do you know that I don't know?" To all of them, and they're just kind of laughing. And that's when you know that nothing good happened. The boys all put on matching black tank tops and had to do like their errands. That was hot. They looked really hot. And they look hot. Were they GTLing? They're GTLing. And then the girls go shopping and <laughs> Sammy goes, shopping in Miami is like different than places in Jersey. And they go to a sex store for like a trans owned sex store. And they go to a shop called Funky Sexy Couture, which I was like, spiritually, that's the podcast version of yeah. the clothing store. I love Sammy before the girls go shopping. She goes, I'm just like so frustrated right now. Like I just like am frustrated. And Snooki goes, you know what you need? A cocktail. A cocktail. And I was like, she's Snooki's a, good girlfriend. a self help coach. Yeah. Ronnie, I just do not dare compare yourself. There's something about watching Jersey Shore also that has made me want to like drink more because they oh, are yeah. because they are so like shameless about booze and like cocktailing and stuff. And I was like, I love that for them. And I love that for me. Shout out to the 
person who, who was at the show wearing a Jersey Shore shirt. Shout out to the Shore Store front row. We Carlina. love you. We love you. Um, S- Sam, the way she's describing this store. Sam is needs a... This is... This is pre... Sam um, needs a lesson. Pre-trans discourse. Sam... Needs I don't a- think it's a trans owned shop. I think she just says... I think it was like a queer sex store. Really? Yeah. I think the... I mean, the person behind the register looked queer. Ness bleep this out when I recount her thing. But she goes, we went to a tranny shop because it has all the stuff that a tranny would wear. And I was like... Mm. But then Wow was like, this is... My this is my kind of place. These are my people, and I just love this world. And True I'm like, ally. she's a fucking trans ally. She's a queer ally. JWoww is real, and she's that's cool that she's she knows where to go. Also, when JWoww puts that top on, it looked like something that Kim Kardashian has worn from Balenciaga. I was like, JWoww's so fucking ahead of the curve. It's cool that they're like they. I feel like JWoww and Snooki like we're going to like. LGBT kind of hubs to get like wacky, like crazy outfits and like hot outfits, like before it was cool. Yeah. And they're like, we like do. this style and like this is representative of the aesthetic that we're going for. And they're aligning themselves. Like, even if they don't understand what they're doing, they're just like general sensibility in the way it aligns is like, queer. that's why, that's yeah. why they are superstars. Sammy was like kind of uncomfortable. Well, yeah, I mean, she's in hetero hell in, like, Mm. a mommy-son Electra complex relationship. Snooki buys $395 gloves. I was also like, I love it to see them have some money. I know. Um, Yeah, Snooki buys. Yeah, it's nice to see them, like, a little green, a little flush. And she's like... The glasses were three hundred ninety five dollars, and he said he'd give me a discount, and then he gave me like two dollars. I was like, "Thanks, bitch!" And I was like, "I love that." She's she so gets them real. for like three fifty. Angelina wakes up at like three p.m. She's had she has multiple people calling her at all times. She sleeps all day and then comes out into the main common area just smirking, full face, full face, bang swoop. And to the gods. Bangs to the gods. <laughs> flats on. Flats. She she's is the, on the flat. She is the queen of ballet flats. I've never seen someone wear black flats like her. There's a type of ballet flat that like is very unflattering to the foot. It makes it look It makes your wide. foot like it like it makes it look really wide. Yeah. And it's not like a slimming. No, it's like a duck bill. It's or a bad. Duck flat, like and a, a duck. there was that time where it was a ballet flat and a dress combo that was just it horrific. Was a, wasn't it like a ballet flat, black leggings, a skirt, and then like a some kind of tank? I'm guilty of it. <laughs> I mean, I that was all. Like, I wore like. Spanx mid calf leggings under like a jean skirt. Yeah. And like with ta- flip flops or a ballet strap. flat and like a tank top or like a vintage rocker shirt. And oh, it was bad. It For, was bad. Any listeners who I'm are ashamed. too young to remember this, like this was a time, the late 2000s were a weird time where you would wear a cropped legging under a skirt. <laughs> It was Lord very, like, have mercy. It was very like. Was, I had a side bang. It was warped to a doll. You and were, I wasn't even like into that music, but it no. was like it was it was the moment. Katy Perry was like the queen of that look for a she minute. was and, and her, Lindsay and Nicole Richie like traded in that look, but they were also really thin, so you could get away with much more. Lindsay was really chic. She had a style all her like own, like a trashy chicness. Yeah, like everything would be expensive, but she had a very particular way of putting things together that was very her. I always thought Nicole Richie was like the pinnacle of chicness. Mm -hmm. Anywho, Um, Angelina sits next to Ron and she's just like giving him a look like, I know everything you did and I want to tell people, but I have the power and you have none. She does give a really good... She's like, you guys should just not be together. I think personally as your friend, you should be single. She's right. That's the most right thing she's ever said. It's the only right thing Angelina has ever said on Jersey Shore. I love what, but she also 
is doing this thing that I find incredibly cringe where she's like, as your friend, as someone who loves you. And it's like yeah. the other people don't feel the same way about no, you. And sad. you're just, you're trying to speak this relationship into existence. I know. Snooki drops a whole thing of barbecue chicken that Mike put in the fridge minutes before I related. She opens it. It falls everywhere on the floor. And she's like, Matt, fell on my slippers. And then Vinny's like, you got to clean it up. And then they're just wondering what to do. They're like, this is when you see how young they are. Mike, daddy Mike in the hot tub smoking a cig. I was like, fuck me. He looked really fucking hot. and Literally me taking my bathing suit bottoms off and just slowly sitting down and having full blown sex with Mike like, while he smokes a cigarette. My back turned to him in the hot tub. I was like, holy fucking shit. He looked shit. really, really good. And I think Vinny, you see Vinny being like a total like kept baby. Because he doesn't know how to do anything. Mike is like the middle child who like... Well, Mike's also older than everyone. And he's like daddy. He's big daddy sitch. And he goes, they actually left the chicken on the floor and asked me, what do we do with the chicken on the floor? Pick that shit up. Yeah. I was like, this is me truly 24-7 in this moment. Mike also was Pick like... that shit up. But he was like tickled by Snooki. I know, but I'm also like, I've been there so many times when people are like, what when you get asked like this dumb question where you're like just like use your brain and like do it mm -hmm. and i was like pick that shit up so i was like mike this, i stand with you it's like he puts a single sheet of paper towel on it like i'm like just me i love Vinny going snook does not know how to clean well either do you Vinny. i know and so they like are lightly trying to like clean up this barbecue chicken mess while sammy sammy finds ronnie's <laughs> little black book and he looks sees, in it of course looks through it it's the like Al, it, i wonder if he did it on purpose either way if your instinct is to go on your significant other or someone's thing Pussy. you should never do that because you're That's you're only good. you're looking for something bad and when you're looking for something bad you you're will. gonna find it and you won't stop until you find it but also you just should never go through other people's stuff that's rude like that's just Period. Don't do that. She sees he'd just written in the number for Caroline, who's his ex. She gets furious. This is what the problem is with these two is they're both really dumb <laughs> and really angry. And that's a terrible combo to have. And really horny for each other. But they want their love language is conflict. They want power. They both just want power. And that's what's happening. So it's a never a good combo when you put two people like that together it's just so exhausting like i've been in a relationship where we had lots of conflict and it was just navigating from like one thing to the next never like a ronnie and sam style mm -hmm. but it's like i can't do that shit like who has the time after one fight like that i'd be like i'm out you know what i mean that comes with time yeah you and might like not, you might not like when you're younger, you don't always have that wherewithal. I know, but also just to see Ronnie's total and utter lack of personal evolution in this part of his life, it's shocking. Mike orders food because they fucked up their chick, his chicken, and he goes, name for the order, sh situation. And the operator goes, wait, can I get your name? And he goes, it's situation. And he goes, are you kidding, man? Whatever. <laughs> He was, yeah, it's S I T U A T I O N. He was, I was oh. worried he wasn't going to spell it right. I know. I was like, Ooh. and then he, Mike's laughing, but it is like a little bit of self conscious because this guy's like not playing the game. It's well, the so guy cute. probably knows now. This, he probably thinks it's like a prank. Yeah. I love Ronnie going to the guys after he and Sammy have like yelled and she's locked herself in the bathroom crying. And he's like, she went through my phone book. Like, what the fuck? Like, and they go, why would you ever write a girl's name? Like, why would you write the girl's name? Why don't you hide it? And Polly goes, yeah, put in Joe or something. <laughs> they know. Just put in Joe. Why did you leave your fuck book out? Like, you're, he did that on purpose. He wants to be single, but he also doesn't want... To lose mummy. He doesn't want to lose mummy, and he doesn't want the pussy to be off the table. Yeah. And guys like this, I think this is a very typical straight guy move is like they're unwilling to cut it off 
but they're gonna do a ton of disrespectful shit until and they're gonna make the woman it be put in the situation where she has to be the one to be like no and set a boundary Mm -hmm. and then they will push that boundary still like even if you say no they're still gonna try and fuck Mm -hmm. you or hook up with you and then it just becomes on you to like constantly reinforce a boundary that you set well even later when she goes to like apologize to him like she apologizes to him he takes no blame he takes no accountability he lets her apologize he gaslights her into being like you should be thanking caroline because she told me to stay with you and this is the thing is like it's fucked it's up. so fucked up and it's frustrating but it's also like you just have to be when you're in that situation you have to be the one that's like fuck you yeah i'm not fucking with you like that and like you have to be so strong because it's not like a two-way no street of both being like we don't need to be together blah 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 and it's hard to be strong when you're i guess in a house also with your ex which is fucked up angelina and snooki have like a confrontation because They've been basically treating the girls have been basically just not acknowledging Angelina like she's a ghost. And she her only choice is to hang out with the guys, but she also loves being one of the guys. She's but or they thinking all thinking she is, but they also hate they her. They don't like her. And so Snooky finally is like, You talk shit about us. You did this to yourself. You've been talking mad shit. And then Jay Wow. well so it all stemmed from Angelina, I guess, went out in Long Island one night and she was talking shit about Snooki and she called Snooki's man a fucking midget. And so then that got back to Snooki right now. And she's like, you can talk about me all day long. Talk, talk, talk. But don't talk about my friends and don't talk about my man. And then she's like, I've had it with this bitch. And she goes out to confront Angelina, who <laughs> truly is on a chaise with a solo cup yeah with her flats sleeping with her flats and her eyes closed and i was like this is she's levitating she is levitating jay wow the way jay wow struts outside jay was wwe now she goes she struts out in such a way that's like so at once sexy but also like truly like brute i want her to like body slam me on the floor but then like make out with me and we have like blue is the warmest color sex i just think she's so cool and she comes out and she sees uh snooki leads the charge she's about she and then she immediately goes she goes what's going on out here and then snooki tells her and then she looks at angelina and she goes you ran your mouth in long island to my best friends and then she goes who are your best friends and she goes j420 joey yang <laughs> This was a true Jersey moment of like, who are these random people? J420? J420? Joey Yang? And then all of a sudden Angelina goes, oh, J420, those are my friends. I was just like, I started, I was crying. I was crying. Because I was like, it's one, it's very like MySpace. It is. And it's also, it's also mob vibes. It's also like Lukey left, yeah. Lucas left eye, but lefty it's a different, guns. It's like, it's like, it's truly like. It, they it's prob- the modernized version these of were probably all their like myspace names like jay wow you know what i mean snooki mm-hmm. like and i just love j420 joey yang snooki goes do not talk about my man he's the sweetest kid ever like he doesn't <laughs> deserve that and then you go- cuts over to ronnie who i think is blackout again he's gone full tiny fedora and that's how you know, like, someone has reached a level of unwell that they need a straight jacket. He's gone Lou Bega, Mambo number five. <laughs> he's gone a little bit of Monica <laughs> in my life. And he's laughing hysterically. He's I like, mean, I would be laughing too. Yeah, he's like, J- for once, it's not my drama. JWoww looks at Angelina and she goes, I'm going to swing. I'm going to get you. And she goes, you sleep with one eye open. She goes, Oh, what do you want to do? She goes, you want to stay? You get your ass beat. Stay? Get your ass beat. Stay? Or get your fucking ass beat. And then she goes... And she, she goes, you sleep with one eye open tonight. I'm going to make you sweat it out. I'm going to make you sweat it out. She goes, you'll be sweating. I got you, bitch. And I was like... And then, I'm even like... Like, I love it. I got you, bitch. And I then, got you, bitch. That is like... And Angelina is like... You can tell she's pissing her little leggings, but she's also like... Trying to be like, oh, she fuck you, attention. Jay Wow. Yeah. Finally, the girls are talking to her. Um, And then Someone the phone goes- rings. And they go, hey, is Angelina there? And then Snooki picks up and she goes, she died. 
They go, can I speak to Angelina, please? And she goes, no, she died. And then they call back and Angelina picks up and he goes, Angelina died? And she goes, no, what? Like, ugh, ugh, someone said that. And I'm just like, Snooki, this is why she's the queen of life. She is. Um, Ronnie and Sam like make up and it's fucked up. And like we said before, he makes her apologize to him, which is like, this is the dynamic it's going to be. This is crazy. And also then he does an, a thing that's also indicative of being deeply unwell. He's like, I just needed to feel something and I needed to feel like a deep, deep pain. So I decided to get a tattoo in the worst place you can get a tattoo. So he went and got like a, a crazy tattoo, tattoo it that took four hours and has Sammy come with him and like hold his hand the entire time. Mummy. Mummy. And he gets hands holding a rosary and it's he it's so Catholic. Goes, I need you. He needs to suffer. He needs Sam to watch him suffering for her. This is this is his way of apologizing to her is but it's also a proving, is. prove your loyalty to me and prove that you'll be there. Because she goes, I'll always be there for you. I'll always, I'm always here for you. I'm Sick. always here. She goes, even if I hate him, I'm always there for Ron. And then he's like, thank you for being there for me. After they're like walking away, yeah. like, arm in arm, she's like, I'll always be there for you. And she goes, but I'm still, you know, I'm still frustrated. I'm having a hard time. And he goes, I'm trying. She goes, I know, I see that. And I'm just like... It's literally been 24 hours. <laughs> she also, he doesn't need, he's the one who got a tattoo. She's in, it's not like he's in getting stitches. No, this is like self-flagellation. Mango, come here. He's fine. Oh. Look at his little head. I know. Um, Angelina hangs out with the boys. Sad. She goes, honestly, I get along better with the guys anyway. I'm like, no, you don't I don't get know along. why, but I get, a I was like, I know why. Cause you have fucking daddy issues probably. Or you just want like male. I get it. But also like get your shit together, but also get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. She time to go. I bitch. feel for her, but I'm also like, your energy is terrible. You're just bad vibes. No one likes you. And it's just like, know your worth get the get your trash bags and get the fuck back up to staten island honey. yeah you're the kim kardashian of staten island go like be the most popular girl i love that she's getting called so much when when <laughs> when the phone rings and Vinny goes angelina phone and she goes hello and they go is angelina there i was like and then everyone laughed i was like this is incredible like and it is also a unifying and bonding experience to be in a house with people and all hate the same person yeah it's good for the group. It's it's good. That's what like society always needs. It's good for the group. It plays out on a regular basis on social media. She's the witch. She is the whoever the cancellation of the day is on Twitter yeah. is like Angelina. But I think it's healthier when it's IRL and not and they online. deserve it and they deserve it. Yeah. Um, they go out to they go out to the club. They go out to bed. Back to bed. And the music's like, Hey, I'm going out tonight. We're going to be. I was watching this and Simon was packing and he went, I wrote this song for you. <laughs> um, I said, this is Carrie in his Bushwick era. It was. Ron is wearing sunglasses. Angelina is also wearing. And she gets black the fuck out. And these girls come over. This is when this is when I felt bad for her. Because these random fangirls come over and they're like being nice to her. And she has a look on her face of almost like, like awe that uh, these women are being kind to her. Because I think she's been feeling so like. Well, they have identified her as the weakest link. And they're like, if we dance with her, we'll get in and we'll be able to be closer to the table and the real stars. And be on TV. And you pointed out a great observation, which was you know that they're famous now because they're wearing sunglasses indoors more often. Yeah. Which is like, you shouldn't do that even if you are famous, but, but you know, you're feeling yourself. Yeah. Uh, Smash cut to me in Oklahoma city in 2004 wearing like Elvis style sunglasses, just like walking into the gas station with like a graphic tee and like tight flared rock and Republic jeans. Rock star. Fucking rock star being like, I'll have a pack of Marlboro lights, please. She gets, so drunk that she's literally falling and these girls are i, I want to be like these are not your friends 
And it, that that's that's when I felt I felt for her. And even though she uh, she's doing a lot of this to herself, I felt for her in this moment because I'm like, she just wants to be seen and accepted and loved. And these people aren't giving her that. And it's like, she needs to just go away. And be All with- of it stems from a deep insecurity yeah and she clearly has people who care about her because they're all ringing. I mean, everyone's calling her up trying so, to but also it's like she probably told every single person in staten island she was gonna be at this house and here's the phone number so like call me and like the reason that they're doing it is partially because she's on the show and they like want in on that action she's their link to the the whole thing is tragic and it's hard watching family reunion because i think she becomes like a regular cast member she comes back and i'm just really trying to reconcile the new angelina versus the angelina that i grew up on i think she just has the deepest regret for leaving I mean, she, I think it's just, you see, you feel it. You're like, she just missed the boat. Like she, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like she, she missed that rocket and they went, they all went to the moon and she had to stay back. I also have similar regrets like that in life or like, so she triggers me in that aspect. She's a shadow. She's, she is the shadow um, and to, to accept her and to stan her. Is to know is her. Is to accept yourself and, and stand yourself. yourself. She, Polly's like flirting and kissing this girl and Angelina is like, I don't know if it's love, but she has, she feels like a weird like territorial thing over Polly and Mike because she's fucked both of them. Um, I thought it was Polly and Vinny. No, it was Mike. In LA. It was Vinny. I'm pretty sure. I think she fucked Mike too. Oh, well. Anyway. Um, so she's she's kind of like drunk and she's in that place of like just hitting people. To kiss Polly D, to wrap your arms around his neck in a darkened, crowded club and be the only person he sees for that 10 to 30 minutes. Beautiful. While you just clutch your tiny Burberry purse. Mm-hmm. I can't know a more heavenly feeling. He's sexy. He's so sexy. But Angelina goes, you're talking to a girl that's AKA married. You're talking to a girl. She's basically going to get engaged. She's going to get engaged. And he goes, I don't care. I don't want to get married. He goes, I'm just taught like what? Get out of here. He also goes, weren't you dating a married man? Yeah. And the way she just like cock blocks them. It's like, it's it, bad. It's it's horrible. It's, it goes beyond just like annoying bad vibes cock block into like territorial geez. thinking that you're like you think that you think if you do that they're all gonna want to fuck you. It's sad. It and made, it's this really is was, dark. It made me like it made me cringe for her, and it made me just want to be like, go home, baby. Like Time you know what go. I mean? Time to go back Pack to SI. those bags. Pack those. But when they get back to the house, I was like, she is. This is the. The throuple from Blonde, and she is Marilyn. She's in the kitchen with Paul and Mike, they, and they're cooking late night food. Mike and her both have their sunglasses on. And Angelina is like shit tanked, and she's being like, No, I love you. Like, I love you. But like, you're with a girl that's like AK engaged. So why are you doing that? And he's like, Don't worry about me. Like, worry about yourself. Like, who cares? And she goes, I don't care, but I love you. And I'm just like, this is awful. She has become crazed. And Mike and Polly are like... She's the Marilyn of Staten Island. She's like, this is... She's basically... They're like, this is basically your last shot. Like, we're the nicest people here to you, and we don't even like you that much. But don't piss us off, because if you don't have us, you have no one in this house. And she starts crying, because she knows that's true. And then she looks up at Polly and just slaps him. And I was like, that's Mm-mm. it. She's done. Mike. Paul f- immediately fugues. He goes total silent stare. You can tell Rage. that he wishes that Angelina would like self-immolate in this moment. And Mike is just like, why did you do that? He goes, oh, <laughs> oh, you're going to slap him? Like, don't do that. I love when Mike gets like hyped because he, he also is a messy bitch who lives for drama. And so he likes it when stuff like this happens. That but he's he also can, like, one of like five kids. So he knows like, he, he goes into like coach Mike mode. Yeah. 
You just, but he also, I think, is just like very socially savvy. And he's yeah, like, you just don't you get don't you don't do get that. like that. You don't get like don't be like that. So then Angelina kind of like crosses her arms and she's walks like, I outside. Love you. I love you. I didn't mean that. And she goes outside and she has her. She still has her sunglasses on. She's also she, rocking a round toed pump. The yeah, round toed pump trend haunts and haunts. But I know that it's mere matter of years before, before it circles Z. back yeah. she's also wearing blue contacts i was like snooky girl and she tries to touch mike again and he goes or polly Paul. and he goes do not touch me are you touching me he's mad and she senses it and she is the look on her face is one of pain because she knows her she it's over there is also a point where jay wow does brawl with angelina in miami it's coming and i can't wait it's i think it's the next episode it's a really satisfying i'm not a person that like likes violence by any stretch of the imagination it's a good one but i do enjoy a righteous watching an annoying bitch get exactly what she deserves which is to get just fucking the shit kicked out of her by jenny farley seeing someone get a righteous smackdown is at the hands of Jay Wow. The hands of someone who's icon. <laughs> Jay Wow honestly should star in a Wonder Woman movie. Jay she Wow's- should be in Wonder Woman 3. If we were living in a justice world, she would be she would replace Gal Gadot, honestly, <laughs> as Wonder Woman. Are you kidding? She should. J- Wouldn't that be incredible? Jay Wow could do Wonder Woman, but Gal Gadot. Could not, not do Jersey Shore. Could not do Jersey Shore. And that's... And that's the truth. That's talent, Dole. That's talent. I want Wow to have her own... Gritty series. Yeah. She should be like G.I. Jane. She could do a one-arm push-up. I love my going, I've seen Wow in the gym and she's not fucking around. And I want someone to say that about me. I want to get on my Mike protein kick. Mike is such a gay kick. bitch. I love him. I know. And like... <laughs> to be like eyeing people in the gym like he's when she does like he's lap pull downs he's clocking like the weight and the reps <laughs> <laughs> anyway guys jay was a strong woman and so is snooki i'm long watching them made me bittersweet even more about like just having just left the northeast i know i was also thinking like I yearn when I went, when I moved to LA and like part of the reason of moving to West Hollywood was like putting myself in the middle of the, like, I loved like psychotic LA bitch culture. And like, even though I don't participate in that, I liked being tangential or I liked being living in close proximity or living within that. And like a, watching it unfold on a day-to-day basis on any given street corner or any little cafe Mm. or the workout classes. And I no longer enjoy that aesthetically or like experientially. But what I do yearn for is juice head Guido Jersey shore culture. And like, I want to just see that kind of energy unfold. And that is what New York gives me. That's what the five boroughs have to offer. You need to do it. I know. So anyway, everyone, listen to our live episode. Our live episode might be out by now, but it also might not be. And if it's not, that means it's coming dole. But listen to it. We were on fucking fire at the Bowery. So it should motivate you to come see us when we're playing in a city near you. I know, because more is coming. In 2023.